beyond demographics to understand our target audience. Attitudinal data gives us a very deeper look as to what people think and actually believe. And of course, the needs becomes a foundation of our data that can actually override or reinforce attitudes. And that's going to give us a reason why do I participate in the clinical trials. There's always been a concern about informed consent, right from inadequate time to failure to specify required procedures to inadequate documentations and translations, weight or inaccurate statements, making commitments which cannot be met, use of false statements to protect the study designs, and what or will I get the drugs after the trial has ended? It's always an open question. Three out of the four cancer patients who were aware of the clinical trial options decided not to participate because the treatment was less effective, they might get a placebo, they would be treated as a guinea pig, and their insurance company would not cover the cost. Those were the reasons given by the cancer patients. So how I go about doing that planning, of course, I must have a feasibility studies done with absolutely no hidden surprises, a proper forecasting, like a leaky pipe, which will actually tell me, yes, this were the recruitment subjects which I will get, a media analysis proper, a recruitment assessment capacity evaluation, and finally, a clinical trials implementation process part of it. So, Retention will help me actually help me in getting a good effective forecasting at the same time in advertising excellence to reach the right study population and an ongoing real-time performance matrix which will tell me hands-on, site-on, what are my results and all the other sites which are non-performing part 